All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Strong Man Winter Circle Podcast. I'm your host, Nicholas Candy. Today's guest is Andrew Hainis. And for you guys that don't know Andrew, he's the 2022 Arnold World, uh, World Champ at the 80 kilos. In 2021, he earned a bronze medal at World's Strongest Man, 80 kilos. And he's a former national champion for a strongman corporation at 80 kilos. Mr. Hainis, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I feel like walking out on the stage, right? It's like Jay Leno, just kind of walk out. <laughs> hands. Yeah, say hello, guests. Say hello, mom. Yeah, walk everybody, up, shake everybody's hands on stage. Everybody that came. But how are you feeling? Of course, we'll, we'll get right into it. The Arnold is three weeks away, so probably right three weeks from now, we're um, flying in and, of course, weighing in and refeeding and all. Uh, actually, I won't be refeeding anymore, but you, you will. But um, how, how's the prep going? Oh, prep is uh, prep is going as good as it possibly can be, given the circumstances of life in general. So, yeah, pretty happy uh, eating clean, uh, not losing any weight. <laughs> you know, um, pretty pretty standard. I think I, I I've started to evolve. I think age and just overall, you know, after 10 years of, of strongman training, I've started to evolve into the next weight class. That's inevitable. So, um, yeah, eating clean, staying lean and, uh, feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good energy wise, mentally feeling good. Uh, I think the only thing that's got me stressed out is just making the weight cut. Now, where are you sitting right now? This morning I was 204 hurts to be this big i don't know how you guys get this big and just like walk around at 202 you know whatever you're walking around it's just it's interesting to uh to naturally have walked around at 190 for so many years of my life as long as i can remember and then now i'm just like naturally over 200 and um yeah it's it's interesting lifestyle you can feel uh, it in the genes and in the mobility <laughs> you know now um I know, of course, the weight cut is kind of what's always on in mind. And usually people are like, yeah. oh, how do you feel about the contest? Like, I got to cut the weight first and then I can kind of focus on the show. But right. um, any uh, any pressure in, in terms of trying to uh, repeat your Arnold Amateur title? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the reasons uh, it's funny that you say that, too, because last year after uh, before I even got to Arnold, um, a lot of my friends will remember this, is I specifically said, I'm going to I'm going to go and I'm going to podium at Arnold. And I'm done with 80 kilo done. And then here I am again, a year from now. <laughs> and I felt that it was absolutely necessary because even though I had such a dramatic cut last year, last year, I started my wide water cut at 207 pounds, a little bit heavier. And, um, it was very, uh, scary up at the very end. Um, I went hypothermic. It was a new thing that I learned. I didn't even know what it was, but I had pushed myself to a, a, a new sort of threshold um, where I was taking in, I don't know if you're familiar with those sweat sticks. Absolutely. Um, everybody's been, been pounding them and they're really good at getting you to just sweat profusely. Uh, but there are a lot of things in those that can uh, have sort of these uh, nauseating side effects. And by the time I made weight, uh, I tried to put some things back in some, uh, some fluids, went to go do an IV. Um, I'm puking up the fluids that I'm putting down. So I can't even keep just basic water down. Um, I couldn't eat anything at that point just because my body didn't want to like actually chew the food. I'm shaking, I'm sweating, I'm burning up, but I'm freezing at the same time. The nurses at the IV center, thankfully, um, one was an NP, a nurse practitioner, and, and she was this close to calling the ambulance. Uh, she was, she was running my, um, my blood pressure and she's like, legally, we can't even give you an IV. If you don't calm down, if your if your system doesn't calm down in like the next 30 to 40 minutes, we're going to have to call an ambulance for you because this is actually really concerning given all the things that you've put in your body and all the things you've done to your body. Right. So, um, thankfully I had my boy there and he took care of me, but, uh, Everything started to come come down after a while. Started to relax. The effects of these sweat sticks started to wear off. Um, and I, I mean, even when I made weight, I think at like one o'clock, I continued to sweat until like eight o'clock that night. And I think I just took way too much of that stuff. In a so, I mean, so I, I've actually, I, I've ASM was a, was a big cup for me, and I, I had similar. Yeah. 
uh, probably a similar situation. So how yeah. many sticks did you do the day of weigh-ins? The day of, I woke up at like 5.30 in the morning, had a stick, and that was when it started. And I think I took a stick all the way up until about 11.30 was maybe my last stick. What, what was the, the weigh-in? The day of within that like about five to six and a half hour windows, it might have been four sticks that morning. Four? Yeah, Ooh, that that's... morning. Not to count also the sticks last night, which led to really crappy sleep. Um, and so, yeah, it was a very, it was actually really scary. But then for whatever reason, uh, I bounced back. And the next day I felt amazing, right? Uh, a lot of that I chalk up to just, you know, having a clean diet, just being mindful during the refeed and, and so forth. Uh, and then went in and got the victory. And now this year, kind of sitting in the same boat, right? And like 204, it's the same. I mean, three pounds doesn't make too much of a difference uh, before cut, I should say. Um, but I felt that it's necessary to go and give a defense to the title. There's a lot of my friends, uh, a lot of new guys who are coming out. And I just thought, you know what? Like, you can't just like have the title and walk away and not defend it. You've got to at least go and give it a defense uh, and, and in a way, kind of give it a, a hand it off to the next person, right? Um, if, if that happens. Uh, I mean, so I, I actually, I do want to talk about some of the guys that are, are of course, yeah. signed up. Right That's now, but, but but going but going back to just a little bit of the cut because a lot of people were asking about the cut. Um, yeah. So you ended up, of course, ended up cutting about thirty pounds or so. So do you this time around? Do you guys have to make one seventy five or one seventy six? Uh, it's one seventy five point six or okay. point four, something like that. Uh, Death and ball. I feel like Death and ball. Uh, he he Def and Bog, He's the one. He's the one who. Um, who I think called it last year. Cause I wasn't at 175 point flat and uh, he was weighing us a few of us other lightweights in actually at the same time. And uh, he said, it's not exactly 175. There is a, a small threshold. I think it's like a 0. 0.4, 0. 0.6, but I never looked in the rule book. I'm just like, just get as low as possible. Get to 175, have no room for error. So yeah, it's, um, it's pretty gnarly to be that low. And then the next day bounce right back up. Um, I try to keep it, you know, people like to brag about how big they get the next day. And I just mm. kind of roll my eyes because that's not the idea. That's not the point is to put as much weight back on the point is to like properly refeed. So that way you can have a, a good performance the next day or the next three days, depending on what you're doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So, it, it, <laughs> so if, if you had to do it over again, or you're yeah. going to have to do it over again in three weeks. Right. Um, I remember I did a, a stick before and a stick after, and I try to time it. So usually the stick lasts about like five hours in your system. So come weigh in. I wanted to have that towards the end. So if you, if you take a, if you take a stick right before an hour before the weigh in, you're going to be feeling that throughout the rehydration yeah. process. Absolutely. Um, what do you, what do you think? Were you going to, were you thinking this time around? This year, I'm pretty sure that I'm only going to be limiting stick to the sticks to uh, the Wednesday of, right? The Wednesday morning. Start off with half. See how my body responds first because it's been a year since I've touched one. So see how my body responds. Uh, and, and then be mindful of that uh, the rest of the day and take it as necessary. See how the weight's coming off. Uh, I'm going to really just focus on hot baths. Um, last year, every year when I'm making these kind of dramatic cuts, uh, it's, you know, hot bath primarily with some time, of, sometimes a, a sauna combo or last year, I also brought my own little pocket sauna, you know, that you kind of the sauna in. hut with the, with, so the head pops out. Yeah. Yeah. But this is how confident I was that I was never doing an 80 kilo show is that again, after last year, I threw the sauna out <laughs> at the Airbnb. And so my friend uh, asked me the other day, he's like, yeah, are you going to bring your sauna? And I was like, no, we threw it out because I wasn't supposed to be doing this again. <laughs> Gee. Well, 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 they are a couple couple hundred bucks, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think you can get them for like 180. Yeah. Maybe someone will split yeah. with you. Um, yeah. But think, not, not not to brag, but I think yeah. I helped popularize, popularize the, the sweat sticks. Um, originally, oh, yeah. it was Johnny using the Carnine Plus. They were, I first used it in, in Hungary in 2019, so he helped me cut oh. weight. And then he switched over to the sweat sticks because the Carnine Plus, you would buy a thing that's like $30, $40. You use it once, and then it will go bad because once 
uh, moisture gets in there, it's ruined. So he got to the sweat sticks and then he gave me a couple sweat sticks and then at um, Clash Record Breaker, when I was in the Clash Record Breaker and at the, at the Waco Regional in 2021, I was handing them out uh, okay. and then Bob posted it on on um, social media yep. and then Bob's the one who shared it with me. Yeah, it, Bob's yeah. So yeah, yeah I think I'm a little, a little bit responsible. So for good for, for good or for worse, I, I think <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. It is a helpful tool. But for you guys that are listening, um, I think most people Bob took two right away. I, I told him to take one. I didn't give him a second one in case, but I think one is normally gonna do it. Um, I like to normally use it in that evening time um, or when I was cutting weight uh, and then one in the morning if if necessary. But usually, yeah. hopefully I'm cl- kind of close to weight. But I did want to, um, yeah. of course, you mentioned about this year's kind of competition. So, of course, last yeah. year you had a pretty good roster. But um, in, in terms of the, the Arnold 80s, it's one of those shows where um, – it's the early in the year show similar to a kind of counterpart of world's strongest man, 80 kilos. So it's a big show for the 80 kilo scene. Um, so yeah, like yeah. usually the, the top guys, if they can, will show up similar to if we're, I have a lot of 105 kilo listeners surprise on this uh, yeah, podcast. Right. So like the equivalent would be um, 105 kilos showing up to America's strongest man. So this is kind of a, kind of the eight on the 80 kilo list. Um, yeah. But this year it sounds like you have the likes of like Ben, I think it's Donan. Donan. Is that say, how you pronounce it properly? I want to, I want to say this. So, like, I, I was listening to Colin Bryce on the um, That's Strongman feed, right. and he was like, he was, he was the only one. Didn't everybody was like Don and Don and, but he was like Donan. Um, Don so, I, I want to at least get it right. Maybe once I meet him, like John mm-hmm. Lack, Lancaster is coming back. Cody Adele, uh, I know Josh you can see Lancaster. Him. Josh. Yeah, Josh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You, have, you also have Cody um, Adele coming. But how do you feel about the the lineup this year? Yeah, Josh Kowalski is going to be there. It's going to be nuts. Chris Sergensen. Uh, a lot of uh, boys from Nationals this year uh, are showing up, which is good. Um, it, it's going to be really interesting. I'm interested to see some younger guys like Alec Patron come in and see what kind of things that they can do against some of us, like Josh and myself. Uh, Cody, uh, some of the more veteran guys who, uh, you know, we're, we've been around doing it a long time. And now these guys are coming up through the woodworks and like Ben uh, and Alec, I mean, these guys are animals to see they're savages. I, I get excited. I'll, I'll go just so they know full disclosure. Like I'll go watch their videos just to get amped up to go to the gym. Right. Cause I'm like, that's, I need that visual in my head when I'm training because I need to know what I'm chasing so uh, I, I'm really excited, also nervous, but it, that's the best way to, to test yourself is I want to be stacked up against the guys who are the best in the class. I want to be, you know, defending the title properly against guys who uh, deserve to be, you know, on that stage and, you know, vying for that title as well. So, um, yeah, to see what the way, the way that the Arnold is kind of set out this year, too, is, you know, we've got the Friday, a break and then a set, uh, Sunday finals that's kind of a bummer. So um, I, I think that we're going to miss out on some performance um, over two days and a little bit of community building that otherwise would happen over that longer weekend of competing because uh, it's all going to be crammed in on one day. And as you know, right, when guys are in uh, competition mode, you're in competition mode. Uh, and so it's going to be a little bit more faster pace, I'm sure, hopefully. Um, but I, I think that's one of the other things that I look forward to is sort of building up that, that camaraderie, the community that we have in the 80 kilo class that makes it such a fun class to be in. Um, but yeah, so we'll see how guys perform on that day one to that day three, technically, uh, kind of split. And, uh, if guys can, can respond, I think that there's some individuals who, I would like Ben, I have no idea how he's going to perform on day one, but I know on day three, if he makes it, he, you know, he's going to be setting a new world record again on the circus dumbbell. It's, it's, um, it's, it's, Ben's have, it's a day two. You have, you have Ben and then you have the former uh, 80 kilo dumbbell record and Josh Lancaster. So you have two, yeah. you have two, yep. you have two guys. Well, actually, so yeah. Uh, I mean, so there's, a, there's a lot of talk around the, so, so Richie Yu and Danny Ashcroft both had that record before, but they didn't have it like in an official setting. And then Josh mm-hmm. was the first one to actually ever set the, the record at an official contest. And then Ben followed up. All right. And so like, there's been a lot, I think one of the issues is that there's not a good system for tracking these things. Mm-hmm. There's 
where was the post on Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, or was the video shared publicly that we have a record of, you know, unless it's been tracked at an official contest. Now you said, uh, Richie, Richie, you and who else? Yeah, Before. Danny Ashcroft. So did they have, did they, have, did they do it like in training or did they, they do it at like a smaller show? Uh, I, I can't say for certain, but I think it, I think it might have, I think Richie might have done it at a show. Mm hmm um yeah rich might have done it at a show but danny I, I can't say for certain but um yeah i mean the the dumbbells i think one that has gained a little bit more popularity recently all these events ebb and flow over the years and circus dumbbell ebbed uh, for a while but i think maybe it was like 2016 or 17 when um there was a another heavier sort of dumbbell season that these guys had started did that uh, started that progression towards the 100 kilo uh, dumbbell, and then it was sort of faded. And now here we are again. Yeah. But I think it's overall, it should, it, should be, it should be interesting. Um, of course, all these guys kind of chasing after it. But to your point in terms of um, guys looking for records, even though it's so hard to track it, usually you just have to – message maybe some of the top guys usually the top guys will always have a good idea of looking yeah, out and yeah. that's kind of what i've done in the past um when i was looking for like the block record looking for the potential like the stone record i had to yeah. um at one point i had to i was told back when when i was in russia that the this was like the heaviest stone loaded by 105 kilo even though it wasn't to like 52 inches but it was too um we did to a barrel which may have been like 40 inches okay. but just what they had um but that was, was old but like i like no one like i was asking around and no one had any idea so once i posted it i got flooded into the comments like oh this guy has yeah. a record no this guy has the record so sometimes you have to put yourself out there in order to really find out you do i think that's the best way to find out i did that <laughs> um I, I did uh highland games 2020 and um uh, for the federation that I was in and uh, the field I was on, I broke the, the weight over bar record and uh, I bragged about it online. And then the Highland community is like pff, pounced on me like, nope, try again, buddy. You do not have the record. <laughs> they corrected it really quick. And so I think the community is really good at responding to those, those things. Uh, but it would be really nice to have, have a platform. I think Iron Podium is trying uh, but to have a platform kind of like open powerlifting where it has all the records of the lifts, yeah. things like that. But um, Davies does a little bit of a tracking, but he does it what he tries to follow. He tries to follow what um, what certain federations uh, post mm -hmm. on their items and put put it on there. So there, there's some sort of tracking, but um, again, yeah. we we'll just do, do our best. Um, so you mentioned, of course, we we would like a three day contest, but it's kind of condensed into two. But having the Friday, of course, Friday Sunday allows us to, of course, not only get a rest on Saturday, but to actually check out and enjoy the expo. Usually if you're competing uh, all those days, you don't really get to check out the expo. Um, is there anything that you're looking forward to in terms of the expo besides uh, competing? Um, you know, it's always fun just to walk around, find, you know, find people that you already know, find companies that you already know, or, you know, just booths where you have friends that are, they're working the booth for the weekend. It's kind of fun uh, going and hanging out and just getting free, you know, getting free, like, whatever it is i don't know you know towels or shaker cups or protein cups i stay away from like all the energy drinks because they're <laughs> passing them out like candy it's nuts um but yeah like last year i didn't even even though it was still three days i didn't let that <laughs> bother me in between one of the events i went and did like a um it was like a, a three minute uh concept bike ride or whatever and so they're like, you're competing. What do you don't do that? And I'm like, why? I'm going to do it anyways. And so I did it and I had the record for that day. <laughs> um, and, you know, you win free, you know, free shit that way. And I like that. I think that's fun to have that's, those sort of interactions and you can actually go out and enjoy it. Whereas, you know, at, at other big contests, you don't really get that convention aspect of it. And so um, it's really nice to go and walk around and especially being an 80 kilo guy and and people say, oh, what are you competing in, bodybuilding or wrestling or, you know, whatever it is, like arm wrestling? Uh, no, no, I'm strongman. And then they just kind of look you up and down like strongman. Yeah, yeah, strongman. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of fun to, to 
show more people uh, about this uh, strongman community, the amateur strongman community. And it's like, yeah, you know, go over to this corner during this time and you'll see, you know, guys your size, guys that look like average shows uh, and also guys that are humongo, you know, out there lifting weights. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll be fun, though. It, last it, year, I think it was it was still trying to come back a little bit. And so mm -hmm. it was kind of missing. Like the convention wasn't full. The booths didn't fill out the convention center at all. And I don't think the, the number of people um, really showed out in records. Uh, I, the people didn't show out in record numbers. Uh, Not like, like 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah no kidding. Wait, were you there in 2019? Nope. I pulled out. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. I was yeah not that, that and then of course, when you see like, you see a wall of people, I'm like, Oh, what are you waiting for? Like, Oh, Arnold's going to walk by here in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, that's, that's how you know. Yeah. So, but uh, any, yeah, any, any like, for instance, any influencers or YouTubers that you're excited about? Like, um, I've been watching a lot of uh, Greg Duchette videos. He's like, Coach Greg here. And today we're talking about Natty or not. <laughs> oh, I, I have you're... never seen this guy. Never seen Greg he, he, I think, I think he's pretty funny, but he does a lot of kind of uh, like basic diet and kind of bodybuilding, but he also has like, does like Natty or not videos similar to, uh, uh, plates no dates or no plates no dates yeah um, more plates more dates more plates there we go i always hopefully you, you might be like swarmed and uh sure. but i always, I kind always of people usually are yeah but cool. I don't know, the astronomics crew was really cool last year it'd be cool to go uh see them again but you said massonomics yeah massonomics um they're, they're cool people um and then, uh, of course, like I'll, I'll um, A7 is a sponsor of mine. So I'll be mm -hmm. over at the A7 booth a lot, uh, depending on where they are too this year. They're usually kind of hosting um, whatever powerlifting contest is going on. And they have a couple of their powerlifters, like Jen Thompson's going to be there this year, breaking another one of her like 100 records. Um, so cool stuff like that. I'm definitely going to try and go be a part of and just see in person. I've never actually seen Jen Thompson compete in person. So mm -hmm. I think that could be something to, to really go uh, spend some time and enjoy. And then the other thing I love is like, there's so much random stuff there. Like, did you see maybe last year? Yeah, it was last year. The, um, the Knights, like the guys who were dressing up in like mid medieval gear. And like, oh yeah. So they're, they're taking over, they're taking over the amateur area on Saturday. So where we're, where we're at. That's who pushed there. us out. That's who's, yeah. <laughs> it's the Knights. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sure, sure is. So, oh yeah. my gosh! Well, well, I'm not, I'm not really complaining because this the Sunday we're on the rogue stage oh, and then we're on the main stage. So that's going to be yeah. A, a we huge do outlook. we do get yeah we do get the main stage. So that's actually kind of cool. Oh, if yeah, you get it, Sunday, so you yeah, got to put it out there yeah. on Sunday when we're on the main stage. When we're on the main stage, exactly. Knock knocking wood and all. That's um, right. But so what number? Are, so this would this be your second Arnold? This is my second Arnold. Yep. Oh, exciting! Yeah. Um, this, and uh, apparently there's, um, I remember from Richie Stout last year told me that no 80 kilo has ever won the Arnold twice. Hmm. So another motivating factor. <laughs> that's, uh, that'd be huge. Do that. Is At Richie coming? Is Richie coming this year? He's going to compete in the new 200 class. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So well, that, uh, the new 200 move. class, it, there's the, what the 200 and um, there's an, there's another 265, 265. That's what it is. Um, so I think that's pretty cool that they're, you know, they've opened it up kind of the playing field. They've also sent out a lot more invites to people who didn't qualify the traditional route too. So I think that they're just trying to build the Arnold up, uh, which is kind of nice to, you know, bring out people who deserve to be on the stage. I think, um, so I think some of the invites are warranted, but I think that they're trying to really popularize it and showcase that this is, you know, it's like, you know, if OSG is like the Super Bowl, then Arnold's like the World Series, you know, like the dynamics between federations, maybe, or something like that. Um, that might have been a terrible analogy, but it's a good, it's a good analogy. They're, they're both big, big, big items, right? You have the sometimes the world's heaviest stage versus the world's strongest stage. So it's, yeah, yeah. Yep. So well, you can say that for like at least for the, the heavyweight men, the, the, Arnold was the heaviest stage, and then the world That's was right. always tested in every feat, not necessarily yeah. super heavy, but also testing the other 
items in terms of athletics, athletics and determination and coordination and all. Um, yeah. But yeah, this will be on that heavy stage. Hopefully, Ooh, uh, that's that's that's, that's, the, that's the goal. Um, so this will be my fifth Arnold. So and fourth yeah. Arnold uh, amateur heavy. So oh wow. Yeah, so this this will be this will be interesting. I made. I think one year, not to not to talk talk too much, because of course I want to move on to some other topics. But um, twenty um, eighteen, I took eleventh, top ten, make the main stage. So that was a okay. that was a, that was a burn. So of course I want. And you were in the heavy division, the open division then. Yeah, I, yeah. So I used those shows as like a prime like primer, but it was also the Arnold. You go with the Arnold, see all your cool. buddies, you compete, test yourself against the big boys. So yeah, exactly. this time I'm not testing. I'm I'm doing it. Um, it's really what it's about, you know? Yeah. It's really pitting yourself up against the bigger guys. Like when it comes to local shows, that's what I love. I like to, to step up, put me in a middleweight class, put me in a heavyweight class because one, I know I can move the weight, but how can I, uh, how can I compete relative to those athletes? And I think that that's what helps keep, you know, um, me elevated uh, when it comes time for actual competition in the 80 kilo class. Uh, I think that helps a lot. And I think you'll find a lot of 80s in the the higher uh, sort of uh, echelons of uh, sort of uh, performance will be doing the same thing, right? They're competing middleweight. They're competing heavyweight uh, at local shows just because that's where they should be competing mm -hmm. relative to the the events at those contests. CJ Krause being the giant slayer at 231 last year. That yes, was, that, right. That, that, was a, that was a lot of fun. He, uh, and you know, what's funny is, you know, he gave up on the, the weight cut rightfully because, you know, he, he was at a point where it just the, the payoff would not have been worth it. And so uh, he called it and moved up to class and then realized, holy shit, I can take these guys down. <laughs> And now look at him. He's he's crushing them. I, I mean, he has now uh, uh, made himself a name as a ninety kilo. I think um, the more the more his hair, the the longer the mullet grows for him, the the better he gets. So it's I think it's a little bit. There's a trade. Well, I want to give him shit because um, I also I think the longer his mullet's getting, like the more he's filling out girth wise too. So mm -hmm. CJ, like you gotta you gotta reel it in there. I know you're enjoying your 90 kilo status, but you know, remember where you came from. But I, I, I'm excited. Uh, of course, of course, how long the mullet is um, this time. I think he's he, yeah. he's um, he's not. I don't know if he's competing, but he said he might stop by, um, or he might be able yeah. to make the trip. But um, yeah, I think he's planning on making the trip. But I know a lot of uh, 80 and 90 kilo guys are going to be listening, and um, Strongman Corporation does have some big plans for that weight class. I can't announce anything, yeah. but uh, of course, I've just been hearing things, so it's uh, all exciting stuff in terms of they pushing the weight that, class, okay. guys. <laughs> um, so, it, so in terms of a kind of other kind of weight class competitions, of course, we have the the Chaos 90 kilo show, which has been it right. was a pretty interesting. So you have a lot of guys. Um, of course, John Hack, we were talking about getting an invite into it. And then you have guys like McKeegan and Tyler Young and Tyler Davis, um, Ben Donan again. Um, yep. And then you have um, Nikolai Myers, Nick O'Hare, um, and of course, men, and many others, the return of MTS as well. Um, yes, so yeah. pretty early, early to predict a winner. I know you were thinking potentially of looking into it, but it might be a little busy time for you, but is it too early to predict a winner in, the, in for that show? Yeah, honestly, I think so. I, I kind of want to. I want to see how some things pan out. Um, one, I mean, I haven't seen. I don't think that they've even started to finalize all of the events yet. Um, so, like I was mentioning, you know, is it going to be a max deadlift or is it going to be a deadlift for reps? Because that can change the the playing field completely uh, and performance wise. Who's going to be on top there? Uh, I think so. Maybe giving a little bit of uh, um, credit to some of the guys who are better at moving. Um, you know, it seems to be that well-balanced that if there's not going to be sort of these max uh, technique events like deadlift or, or log press, uh, and it's going to be really more about AMRAP or athleticism that I, I almost am curious if, if people who are better uh, movers are going to be performing better at the contest. It should be pretty interesting. Um, Luke Davies did like a, does a podcast with a guy out of gym life. Um, 
pretty frequently talking about the contest and the qualifying events. He has a deadlift for reps and also a max log. So I, th- I feel like a, a max overhead press, it would, it would be pretty safe to say that you he's getting incorporated. So like for instance, MTS could kind of start off pretty hot if there's a max log, pretty sure yeah. he did. He wasn't 90, 90 kilos. Exactly. He was kind of a, maybe a little kind of a fat 90 kilos, but he hit 418, 418 strict press, which is pretty nut- nutty for a strict. Nut- strict. Yeah. Mm. He, if you, he did it last summer, so if you want to scroll back and check it out, use that for motivation for your next oh, log yeah. session. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty nutty lift. I think he w- we went for 200 kilos, but he was struggling to struggling to clean. And he does an interesting thing where he it's not it's, it's not the way I would clean it, but it's a kind of like a strict press form because it's he's all, he's really leaning back and mm-hmm. to start to engage the strict press. Um, so then that means like you're putting all that weight on like a certain part. Of your back, of your of your back, you know, like the press. You, you, the, so like right, so he's in that bent press position before he presses it, but that's two hundred kilos on a guy that's on a frame that maybe is like two hundred ten pounds. So four forty versus yeah. two hundred ten. That's a pretty a pretty crazy lift. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no kidding. Mm-hmm. Wow. But, but yeah, I'm excited for that show. But again, for you listeners, I think there's in the qualifying that starts March first. There's going to be five spots open mm-hmm. to qualify. So. Um, I think he has already potentially 50 guys that are interested in doing the qualifiers. So that's, oh. I think that's going to be a huge turnout. Um, I think that's the price um, purse is uh, at 7,000 already. So is that combined? I think, um, I think that's combined. I think he's still, they're, uh, they're soliciting sponsors. Thinks that that's the current commitment from sponsors already. Mm-hmm. Not, not too shabby. No. Yeah. But I think just, I'm glad that there's more overseas shows for weight class athletes because it's really exciting to compete overseas. Um, yeah, meet new people, and then especially if you're hanging out with your American friends, it's just you're you're overseas. You you, you kind of even though you're competing against each other, you, you of course that camaraderie and that tight bonding, and of course you have experiences for the rest of your life. So some of my favorite uh, contests have been the ones overseas. Um, but some of the listeners, um, of course, some of the questions came up. Um, in terms of how long you've been doing strongman and how you got started originally, if you want to give us a quick one. But you mentioned off off the show you've been competing for ten years. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, twenty twenty two was actually supposed to be my. I was calling it the decadal because uh, <laughs> it was my tenth year um, since my since the very first contest that I did, and I was going to do um, ten different types of contests, and I never got around to it doing it because after Arnold, I took on a new job. I moved across country try to find a new home, got into a rental. Life was crazy. So uh, I didn't do any of that fun stuff, but my first strongman contest was in 2012. And uh, I actually started doing strongman before that in, in 2011 when I was in North Carolina. I was stationed in North Carolina, a uh, little town, Goldsboro, and just working out at Gold's Gym, having a good time. Um, and I had to stay fit for the military, right? Like there are a lot of different demands for the, for the job that I had. Uh, and so I was always doing weird things in the gym, right? I would go find tires. I'd be doing the tire flip. And I'm like, you'd move the tire one week and then you move it out the next week. And you realize like nobody else is touching it, but you, well, long story short, a couple guys in there and they said, Hey, you should, you should work out with us. You might enjoy doing some of this stuff. And so they sort of taught me the, the fundamentals of like doing sandbags and a farmer's carry and like some of those real strongman essentials. And so that was my first exposure to strongman. And then I moved to California. Um, I went to a CrossFit gym that had strongman stuff in it. And they basically said, it's, it's your space if you want it. And I, they basically made that my home, did my first contest there in California. And when you're in the military, it's really hard to stay on, um, stay on a, a strict regime, like training regime, Absolutely. because you're con- I'm constantly deployed, I'm traveling, I'm TDY, there's so many things going on. And so no matter where you are, like, you just don't have access to equipment. And you can only do so much. Uh, and you can only plan so far out, because if you plan for OSG, or nationals, or whatever it was, you know, in 2012, by the time that you think you're ready for it, you're going to be deploying. So it, it was just kind of useless. So I started doing a lot more powerlifting because that was a standard I could keep up with. And um, my printer's talking. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and so that was like a standard that I could keep up with. Mm-hmm. And um, everywhere you go, you deploy anywhere. And there is a barbell and there are plates. 
and it was pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know it's, what it's, it's, it's all right. <laughs> like, what the hell? You talk over it. Um, this must be included. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll just, I'm going to just read whatever's going on. So anyways, um, that was my first contest. Then I did a lot of powerlifting. And then eventually, when I got out of the active duty service, I got back in the strongman and was... Now, what year was that? Uh, my first contest back was 2017. That was my first contest back. And so, yeah, basically five years of powerlifting. And I did a bunch of CrossFit. Like in the meantime, I'd gone and gotten my CrossFit certification, but I never actually was, considered myself much of a CrossFitter. I was more or less like a strongman who enjoys doing like these high intensity, shorter Metcons, um, which I still enjoy to do. And you, if you do my training, like you see a lot of that still built in. But everywhere I moved from California to Phoenix to Air, uh, to Georgia to Philly, like I, I always did sort of uh, strongman classes at CrossFit gyms. It was just something that no matter where I went, there were CrossFitters. They loved doing strongman stuff. And so you'd have a strongman day once or twice a week. And uh, it was just a really good bridge to the gym and the community there and access to equipment everywhere you went. That was a really long winded answer, but sorry. Right. I hope now, that. How many contests have you competed in? um thus far oh my gosh how many contests have i competed in man off the top of my head a lot um i wish i had i've got another computer in front of me i can tell you every contest i've competed in powerlifting highland games crossfit um strongman of course every place i've taken 30s or 40s on every event what's that you think you're like in the 30 count 40 count oh definitely definitely so one thing I, I always like to mention, I actually just made a video on it. I, I, of course, I kind of outlined my career. Um, yeah. and done, this will be my 40th competition um, wow. coming up. Um, and I, I was just, and that's across. How old are you? Years. I'm 33. So I, I started uh, in 2012. Uh, okay. That was my first competition. So I did two shows, then three shows the year after, four shows. Um, and then, and then I started averaging. What was your first weight class? Say again? What was your first weight class? All 231. Was it? Oh yeah, I've been I've been this way for a while. Um, probably since I wrestled in one I wrestled at 197 in college, um, starting in 2007, and then my my senior year I went heavyweight, but I sat around 245, 250. So I've so I've kind of always been this way for a while. So yeah, when I started yeah. going heavyweight and got up to 280 really fast, that's only really 30 pounds off of uh, where I was in 10 years. So I didn't think that was that crazy of a um, of a weight gain. So, yeah. Uh, well, but what I'd like to, well, I was kind of going with that is that, um, I, I did a rubric in terms of it took, it took 12 contests in order to get my pro card. It took 24 contests in order to get my first significant podium. That was second in OSG in 2017. And it took 34 contests in order to get my real significant win. Um, and that was clash in 2021. So I always like to oh, kind of yeah. illustrate and repeat that strong man is kind of a, is a game yep. of consistency, a game of determination. And the more contests you get in, the more experience, the better you are competing, the That's better right. you are to get the results. So if all these listeners, I think they're going to win their, win these big national shows at six or seven shows, I think need, need to uh, take a step back and really figure out Definitely. what it takes to get to the, the top level. And I hope yeah. our conversations help. That um, I, I like the way that you broke that rubric out. I haven't done that, but I've got you know, 31 different strongman contests, 25 podium finishes in the contest, 14, 14 first place finishes of those 31, um, and then 10 power lifting, uh, five Highland, and then a bunch of other random things. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting, interesting that you see like individuals who have a little bit more tenure uh, in the sport um, or, or just experience actually competing over time and what they've gone through and what their accomplishments look like versus versus a lot of um, newcomers who they have expectations and they feel like they're constantly hitting a wall. Uh, and it's just, you know, it's you really have to kind of bide your time. You've got to continue to train because strongman is not the same from contest to contest. It's not the same from year to year or state to state. Um, so there's always there's so many different dynamics. And the more that you're actually involved in the community and competing, uh, the better you become uh, one at training, um, which is incredibly important because you learn how to train more efficiently. But then also at competing, which is its own training and competing is not they're not uh, parallel. They're, they are parallel, but they're not similar uh, in the same 
threat as uh, I'm just going to do what I do in training. Like you have to have a different mindset in a competition scene than you have in a training scene. Um, there's a lot of different dynamics. And so you just have to kind of build grit to, to get these sort of, um, I don't know, accolades. If you're, that's what you're chasing, you know? I, I always say like a lot of times that there's the point of like peaking in the right time. Um, peaking for the show, but I don't feel like you, you can't just peak in terms of programming and training. You got to peak as a person. You almost have to be your yeah, best self know. coming into like those shows that. because let's just say like your like your weight cut we we're talking about earlier. You had a lot of things thrown at you that you didn't expect, right? Yeah. And like how, sometimes one of those two things, maybe your old self, you would have said, "Screw this, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go through with it." But an older, right. more mature individual would be like, "I can, I've done this before. I can, I can grind it out." um I'm yeah more, i wanted more i wanted it strong enough um, yeah, and that's what like being uh and i think it's for for most of the classes where you cut weight right cutting weight is event number one like, <laughs> that's event one uh and i i've had individuals like justin weaver tell me like that's what makes me so lethal as an 80 kilo is my ability to cut weight and then rebound after that weight cut is what makes me a good 80 kilo competitor um, and, and so I think that it's just, I've done, I mean, 31 contests. I don't, I can't tell you offhand how many of those I've cut weight for, but I would say it's probably three quarters of them. So within, so you're doing all those contests. So yeah. 31 strongman competitions, but at what point in your, in that 10 year spot, when you, maybe when you came back in 2017, did you realize your potential that like, for instance, you could win the Arnold amateur, you could podium at world's strongest man, 80 kilo. When did you realize like that your potential in the sport, that you're, you're pretty good, pretty good at this, man. Um, I don't think there was a point where I realized that at all. Actually, I think it was a little bit different. I think I enjoyed the sport so much that I just wanted to be part of it. Mm. Right? I didn't care what level it was at. Like if it was nationals, like I just want to go because now I have friends ac across the country who are going to be competing there. And it's fun to see how we stack up. Um, like, of course, they, everybody in the back of their mind, they want to do as best they can. But I never, never went with the expectation like that. I'm just going to go and crush it. And that's my competition to take. I don't really operate with that kind of mindset. Uh, even though like, I like to be really competitive uh, it, at first it was more or less like, I just want to be part of it. I just want to have fun with people. And then I think if I was to have a moment of clarity, it was OSG 2019. Um, I had broken my foot. I broke my heel bone. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was teaching a strongman class. And I was literally at a 90 pound sandbag on my shoulder. And I'm telling them, you know what, this is how you walk through the sandbag as you're throwing it over your shoulder. And I stopped and I said, don't let the sandbag fall directly down onto your foot. You need to walk through. <laughs> and what did I do? I let the sandbag go straight down onto my heel. Ooh. 90 hey, pounds, okay. broke my heel bone, pulled me out of nationals. It was like six weeks out from OSG. I'm walking around in a boot for weeks. Um, and it was like a bearable pain, but it will, by the time I got to OSG, I was like, well, I'm just going to do it and we'll just see how we do. Uh, probably get dead last. I ended up getting fourth place at that contest. Oh, wow. And that's when people were like, hey, and that was on a broken heel. <laughs> and, and that's when people were like, hey, you're, you're better than you think you are. Um, and that's when I started probably turning up the heat a little bit. But like otherwise, really getting to that point, it was just like following the energy and that's where the energy was. And that's what I wanted to be part of. Uh, so that, that was really it. Oh, but hurting your heel. So you have a, so yeah. at, um, so at OSG, you have a third and fourth place finish. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Not too, not too, not too shabby. Yeah, that, I don't know how I did that, but, um, uh, I remember, I think we had a 655 yoke and sandbag carry over the yoke or something. Mm -hmm. And we taped my heel up with so much ACE bandage. It, it was, I was in tears in that event. It was so painful. I remember going back and like two weeks post event, the doctor ran another X-ray and like, you could just see like, it was still fractured. It was, I don't know if it was worse or like what the issue was, but he was livid. And I'm like, well, that's what I do. Like, sorry. <laughs> um, but I like the point to you're mentioning about, um, of course, like being in the sport, loving the sport and all. I think that takes a, that also is what kind of makes a champion. So like, for instance, you take away the, 
let's just say the the fans, the money, or just the exposure, and you just have the weight, are you still going to do it? Um, yeah, is the right. question. Um, I was actually listening to, and this this goes into my next kind of topic in terms of what grinds your gears, but what kind of kind of grinds my gears. I was actually li- listening to um, Mitchell Hooper talk on. Um, a podcast. So I've had him on my podcast. Of course, he had a great year last year, but he was talking on a podcast with a couple of Australian dudes, uh, Tyson Morrissey um, and another gentleman um, on Tyson's podcast. And he mentioned that he doesn't exactly necessarily identifies as a strong man. Um, mm-hmm. And he says if he doesn't win World's Strongest Man in three or four years, he's going to move on and do something else. Um, and I feel like you can't really have that kind of thought in your head that like, I'm going to do my best and because I feel like all the world's strongest man winners at some point really love the sport Mm -hmm. for what it is um, down to the, every detail, every, every atom. So I feel like if if you guys are listening, I feel like the, the, you're the best, the best out there really have their hearts in it. So it's something that I can kind of lend. So that's one thing that I um, not exactly grind my gears, but um, I was thinking out, but more so what grinds Andrew's gears in the sport strong man. Well, um, not a lot grinds my gears, but like to kind of just piggyback off of what you said there for even just a, a hair of a second is that like, no matter if you're, if you're committed to something and you want to do well, like you do need to have sort of like the, this, this narrow focus on doing well, <coughs> really like, why would you go through the amount of training that it that it requires the damage that it does to you physically, mentally, diet, nutritionally, right? Like all those things that just like take up time, take up effort, take up, you know, band, bandwidth up here, all that. Why would you do that if you're just like, well, if I don't do well, I'm just like done with this whole thing. Like, no, like if you're going to be like even minutely committed to being the world's strongest man in any division in whatever a class, you need to just stay committed and stay the course. And I think that that that's almost like that's a human characteristic that you need to maybe, I don't know. I don't want to be like insulting, but like you need to sort of like reframe the way that you take on maybe other things in your life too, because that's, those are commitment types of um, issues. I think, I don't know. Does that sound weird? Did that that come out right? I feel like I'm picking up what you're putting down. Okay. Putting down. It's just, you just, you just gotta you got you gotta love the sport if you get if you're gonna do number one. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. Tom Brady loves football and also kissing his son on the lips. That's that's what he loves to do. So that's there you go. <laughs> that's where you're gonna be <laughs> motivated. But uh, of course, I'm a big fan of Tom, new, new one guy and all. Um, but any anything in the sport that grinds your gears? Any tra- any training? Any things that you see newbies doing lately? Um, I, I would say the the one thing that probably grinds my gears is just like cockiness like people Mm -hmm. who they walk out they haven't spent a lot of time in the sport and you see it a lot maybe uh at local shows um and you'll even see it at like bigger shows but people who are just really cocky and they stay that way until they find themselves at the bottom of the ranking and then they start to open up and then they start to you know say like oh you know sorry i was just in my head i was in a zone um, and I, I really, that really frustrates me, uh, only because like, this is, this should be cordial. Yes, it's competitive, but it should still be cordial and you're making enemies right off the bat. And that does more damage to your performance than it does to your opponent's performance. And I think that that is sort of self-defeating. Whereas, uh, um, you know, if you're walking out and you're being open-minded and you're introducing yourself to people and you're, if you're helping a peer who's about to go uh, break a, a record, I'm talking like a couple years ago, right? Cody Abel, um, mm. and he went back to back with log overhead, max log overhead. And me and him are the last two 80 kilos on the ground or on the stage or whatever, the lightweight part. He's literally buckling my belt for me. He knows that I'm about to go out and potentially break the lift, um, uh, or go up to the next rung of the ladder and he's like i got your belt bro like is what it is um so i think that there are just certain dynamics like that in the community atmosphere of it that can make it healthier for everybody that i i just almost have no tolerance when people are just kind of close-minded to that i don't know I, i'm sure everybody's what, what, what do you think i got i got a 
you know, because yeah. I was this kind of the same thing. I, I think you should be humble, let the action speak for itself. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, of course, yeah. Marcel, have fun. But I also um, I had Colin Bryce on back when um, last year, and I was t- I was talking about he's like you've seen so many strong men go in and out of the sport um is it better to be the humble um more gracious competitor or be maybe like a evan singleton being of course cocky wwe personality being arrogant maybe arrogant like eddie hall and i asked him like which contrast but he almost was almost siding with the the arrogance or the cocky because the, the, that almost what sells tickets to a yeah, set. Exactly. I was gonna say that. So for he, him, it's all like, about what what, what interests what interests of someone. Someone that's gonna say, yeah. "I'm gonna be the best in this individual event, be the best in this particular region, be the best in the world." That's what sells tickets. That's what gets right. people hyped. That's what gets people excited. And, and then you kind of to the contrary is like, well, if you say, "I'm gonna come into this, come into this." Uh, competition and take mid pack on the events and maybe take mid pack. That's, that's not yeah. too exciting in terms of a, a, Give me a reason to be on my roster. Right. Yeah, I get it. And from his standpoint, I think it's a totally different perspective. <laughs> he also, he's got a board he's got to answer to, uh, you know, they have certain performance quotas mm-hmm. that they're trying to meet. And when you're talking in the UK, especially, I mean, they actually do fill out their stadiums. We don't, <laughs> we struggle with that. We struggle with that public viewership component uh, of strongman. Uh, unless we're at places like the venues, like the Arnold. Uh, and so I think that he has a, a very different strategy about it. Um, and I mean, Evan's a great athlete, no doubt about it, but I don't, I don't care to watch him perform because there's something about like the performance, the, the craziness, the manic kind of uh, a violent sort of anger. I, it's just like, I don't know. To me, I don't, I don't, it doesn't resonate with me. Uh, but it's awesome to see, you know, crazy log presses, or, or it's nice to see like how fast he's able to move a sandbag from, you know, or five sandbags from one end of the arena to the other. Like that, that stuff's really cool. Uh, but it's the other little things I don't really care for. But the general public freaking love it, right? Like mm-hmm. they love it. Uh, so it's just a, I think that's just a, you know, thing for me. He, he, uh, he got a lot of, um, he said he got, um, not a lot of praise, but he got a lot of it, fulfillment and enjoyment when he he did the John Cena, You Can't See Me, to Tom Stoltman in Glasgow. Yeah. And the whole uh, stadium booed him, and he just thrived off it. And then, yeah. uh, and of course, a, a lot of times when we bring in that component on that high level, I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, I think yeah. kind of to wrap up potentially and see what you kind of think um, in terms of, again, being the cockiness kind of when the sport, when the cockiness kind of hinders your ability to make relationships and to talk to your fellow competitors and to network and learn, yeah. I think that's what it goes too far. But if you can keep yeah. it to a certain level that you can still promote yourself, but also still be um, open and, again, make new friends okay. and make new connections. But in, in a time where you're hindering your own ability to make connections. And that's- I think that's what's really important, right? As you look at the sport, like, yeah, in the moment, in the heat of it all, that was valuable. That had uh, um, some gravitas to it. But later on, when I'm no longer a competitive athlete and I'm tr- still trying to build my name in this business, do I have people that are, you know, do I have pillars I can go to, people who I can uh, resource or have I effectively damage those relationships because of the way I performed back then. Um, I don't know. That's something I'll never, I'll never know that because mm-hmm. lightweight, uh, we don't, um, we don't really have that, that longevity. I think with what you see with a lot of the opens and a lot of the heavies who their careers continue much longer post um, post actual competitions. Um, so yeah. Why, why, why do we see so many strong men, uh, older elite strongmen who are MCs and show sponsors, and we we don't see so many uh, of the the smaller guys carrying on with that stuff. I well, don't know why. I think it's one. Of course, is the record. It's the visibility of the the heavyweight strongman. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, it's harder to be a long time weight class athlete. You usually either push yourself out of the the show or um, or push yourself out of the. Of course, you're, of the sport just because of injuries but um you we are always doing a lot of of course huge lifts 
um, compared to our body weight. Um, I keep I keep saying we because I'm not heavy. I'm a heavyweight now. I need now as a heavyweight, I got to look down at the weight classes. That's the that's the thing, right? That's the that's all the heavyweights do. I'm just kidding. Just look down. Uh, <laughs> but um, I think for the for the most part, it's just we always doing so, such heavy weight, so it's, we usually have a shorter career span. Like if you think it was Adrunas, mm-hmm. he was usually. 170 kilos plus throughout his most of his competition so a lot of times if he has a 300 log for reps that's not gonna be as taxing to him than it may be a 270 pound competitor so yeah. a lot of the stuff is taxing so they can't have that really long really long career um but i think i think that i think that will change um i think kind of over time i think now we're just seeing no more variety so things have really changed for the weight class athletes for the last five six years and i think it's going to continue yeah. um and that's yeah, some of the federations have helped a lot with that <laughs> a lot of the new, uh, around a lot of the new logistics around videography and film producing uh, a lot of people now taking advantage of youtube and podcasts things like that i think is is helping podcast. The those dynamics. We're, we're on the podcast <laughs> exactly exactly mm-hmm. right uh so maybe we'll see we will see more of that uh later on and I, i'd love to see that i think I think there are a lot of good people out there who are incredibly knowledgeable who would make you know great MCs or um, just other you know guests at certain shows um, who are never really considered so yeah. soon um, so for going forward goals in the in the future in and outside of the sport of strongman so in the sport of strongman what are you looking to accomplish before your career mm-hmm. is over I have accomplished what I wanted to I got my podium at OSG and I got my podium at Arnold. Um, I think the next big one that I would like to do is uh, not a weight class thing, but I want to take on the Steinborn. I think I want to, you know, do that on a big stage. Um, Martins has the official record of doing a Steinborn squat uh, with the rogue globe um, barbell setup with uh i think five or seven squats or something like that at 565 and I, i'm like i could do that i've done i did that with 405 and it was relatively easy um uh, so 565 is actually a much bigger jump though so um i think that that's something i want to do some more odd feats of strength but also i just want to go back to having fun i really want to get back to like sort of the genuine hobby of strongman rather than like this intense expectation and responsibility of the sport uh, as an athlete so i think that's really one of my goals and along the way it'd be a lot of these feats of strength right uh doing the steinborn i want i want to go do some of the stones up in iceland i want to go and travel europe and do some of those fun things um uh i feel like i've been, I've been invited to norway two years in a row and i haven't gone and it's just like i just got to go do things like that to get the, back to just the fever fun. show the fever shows yeah yep and, and i just want to i just want to have fun again that's that's the goal uh, awesome but how about outside the sport of strong man any any, any professional goals you want to share with us outside the sport well um i just moved to madison wisconsin last the Last week or last year, a week after Arnold, I moved to Madison, Wisconsin. Um, this year, a week after Arnold, I will be signing for a home here in Madison. So it's just like, oh my gosh, a um, lot of things going on. So getting into a home and just kind of getting back to a normalized lifestyle is going to be really nice. Uh, uh, just getting back to a normal training routine will be really, really nice. Um, yeah, I don't really know. I, I probably want to just like breathe a little bit, go on some vacations. And I got a book I've been trying to write for like two years now, and I'm just probably going to write a damn book. So I like, I like to help you on that. Are you doing, is that like a solo project? Yeah, just solo. Yeah. Just so I started, started mid pandemic and then put it off for training and then put it off cause I'm lazy and then put it off cause I move and now I'm still just lazy. Um, <clears throat> but it takes time. It takes a lot of time. And, um, I think now I'm in a career wise and whatnot, I'm in a better position to write. So kind of do some of that, just enjoy things. <laughs> That's really it. Absolutely. But of course, all, all great answers. Um, and then you're the sixth 80 kilo guest I've had on the show. Um, yeah. just because I think more people want to know about these pound for pound Titans, of course, 80 kilos are usually the best pound per pound overall. Um, I've had Tommy, Ricky, Robert, huge, Robert Hughes, CJ Krause, Dean McVie. Who are some other 80 kilos I should bring on the show? For, for Ooh, yeah, yeah. Who, do you, who, who do you want to hear from? Oh, I think a, a good one would be, would be Cody Abel. Uh, 
So, I mean, my boys, Cody and Josh, who I'm going to be competing head to head with, um, beat them last year at Arnold. And um, I know they're both looking forward to taking me down. Mm -hmm. Um, They, they they're both good stewards of this sport and good humans to have on. I think, Um, I think, so did you, did you, did you have any guys from the UK on yet? Um, D- D- Dean McMe from Scotland. Dean. You said Dean. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, Dean's good. Danny Ashcroft would be a good one. Danny. Um, Carl Sherry from um, Australia. Australia. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I'll, I'll start. Yeah. I'll start. The, yeah. Those, those are those all great. Up and comers yeah. that you probably could get on. You probably meet at the Arnold. Um, I think there's some up and comers that'd be good. I don't know. Um, Josh Hen- Hendrickson. He's a, uh, is he this national champion at 175? Uh, right. 508. Barbell Club, I think, is his. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so yeah, he's coming. I can have a competing podcast host on my own podcast. Oh, what is this? Oh, of course <laughs> you can. That's how you guys like ra- raise each other. It's all you about know, community, man. I know, but you, you know, if there there is there's plenty of podcast uh, of um, I would say podcast content on Strongman more than ever. So I always was looking for it. So I always yeah. prefer to pol- political podcasts. So uh, Dude, it's good. It's good that it's it's more strong. I've been listening to podcasts for years, and I remember. Years ago, like the there was a podcast that I can no longer find. It was um, something around strength culture, uh, and it's long gone. But they did a really good episode on how Strongman's origin story really kind of came to be, uh, and they had it over a couple of different series. And I can't freaking find it. And it was so good. It talked about you know how Olympic lifting evolved out of Strongman and how powerlifting evolved out of Strongman and the characters and the coaches who actually helped propagate those sports um but yeah that was like one of the first and then there were no other strongman podcasts kale beck i think started his i don't know yeah starting strongman you're the talking, talking strongman man. yeah talking strongman but there really were none and now if you type in strongman you just get like a couple dozen mm-hmm. it's wild it's so, a good thing though it's good it uh it, i you know, could need, so need more Nobody's going to lift up the, the sport of strongman right now, but us. Um, so we got to give big platforms like ESPN or whoever mm-hmm. to, to give us a venue, uh, to give us the space to say that, oh, there is some value in this community. Just we, make like it, this we make it a pun to lift, lift, lift up the sport. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, I mean, CrossFit managed to find that, um, find their niche and, and popularize it with support from a lot of private companies. Um, and I think that there's still that opportunity for Strongman to do that. We just have to continue to move forward. Um, I, I know I, I feel like people are going to say it's more complicated than that. And it is in a lot of ways, but that's a different conversation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but we're, only, we're getting to the, the hour mark. Uh, so I don't, of course, want to take up your, your whole evening, but I do appreciate you coming yeah. on. Uh, where can the listeners find you if they want to learn more about you? Oh, um, basically at heinous strength. Uh, that that's the best place to find me. Heinous strength on Instagram. Uh, it's pretty much the only social media. Are you TikToking? Are you YouTubing? Are you Discording? Are you you Twitching? No, I don't do anything. Uh, I'm pretty lazy when it comes to social media. Like you'll even see, um, my, my Instagram posting ebbs and flows. I'll have a, I'll have a lot and then I'll have like none for a while. Then I'll have a lot and I'll have a none for a while. I really don't care too much about social media anymore. I kind of feel like it's a time sink. It's, I think lately it's, a, it's a tool. So where I can kind of an extension to reach. To new audience, I think. Yeah. That's kind of how I, kind of how Are I treat it. Uh, I'm not twitching, but I made a discord. But right. I haven't used there, it. That's a good step. But I tried I, I, using Twitch for uh, for training um, back during the pandemic, and I, it just I got a few viewers. Things never really seem to kick off. Just I think it's a little bit more foreign for people who aren't like traditionally uh, like a gamer or or a podcaster traditionally. Um, but there are a couple people who will record their entire gym session, and they they'll get a couple thousand viewers so just watching them do you know bench press with dumbbells i'm like i could do this with the log and you know i'm getting three viewers though so i gave <laughs> up on it but yeah yeah you usually just if you can try if you can focus on a few that's that helps out but yeah. it's just hard to focus on all of them but i'm gonna post your instagram below so they can learn more about you um but again i appreciate right. you coming on i'm i'll probably yeah. see you at the rules meeting it's probably the probably the for the first time we'll Thursday see night. or maybe we'll hang out at the red roof for a little bit 
Um, oh, yeah. fifth, fifth year in the red roof. Can you, can you believe oh, it? Are you staying at the, are you actually staying at the red roof? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Got it. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm getting an Airbnb or, or I got an Airbnb. Uh, I'll be staying there with one of my other, my, one of my guys who I've been coaching for a while and uh, he's cutting weight to 231. So we're going to be in there suffering together in this who, weight. Who, who's that? Rick Carroll. Rick Carroll. I don't think I met him. So yeah, uh, you, you may have um, seen him maybe at a national show. Um, big bearded guy. He's uh he's he's gonna do some damage. He's gonna upset some people. All right. Well, I'm gonna keep my eyes eyes out. So let's you know we'll put a little night driving and we'll do a nice soothing exit. Thank you for tuning in today, guys. It's been a lot of fun talking to Andrew, learning all about it, learning about the Arnold. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, notification bell, and until next time, stay strong.